Nothing will save you more time in Excel than learning the shortcut keys. In this video, I'm going to show you the shortcut keys for 18 types of task in Excel and even how to make your own shortcuts as well. I've pulled together these shortcuts onto a handy cheat sheet. Just click on the link in the description and we'll send you the cheat sheet straight away. All the timings are in the video description so you can just jump to whichever shortcuts you think that you want to know first. Either way though, let's get on with it. So, fundamentals first. Okay, so you're in an Excel sheet. Click anywhere in the sheet outside of data and hit Control A. You will select the entire sheet. Now, if you are in a data table and you push Control A, you will just select that data. So that in itself is useful. Now, if you want to cut, it's Control X, and then you can come over here and paste, which is Control V. Now, say I wanted to copy it, this is Control C, and paste it back again. There's a copy. So I can then copy that again, and move down here, and this time, if I do Alt Control V, I get the spaced paste special box come up. Now, any letter that is underlined on this, you can select by just pressing that letter. So you can see, for example, that V for values. If I select V, that will go straight to values. I can push tab to move to the different sections, such as pressing a V there will skip blanks. Pushing it again, incidentally, will get rid of that. And then, the button that's highlighted at the moment is OK, uh, but I could move to Cancel, for example, but I won't. I'll move back to OK, and then I can hit Enter, and there's my pasted values. Simple but very useful shortcut here indeed. Say I'm a bit slap happy and I mistakenly delete all of those values. All I need to do is Control Z for undo. Control Z for undo. Now, if I decide actually I did want to do that, after all, redo is Control Y. So that's undo, Control Z, redo, Control Y. There's two ways of making an instant chart in Microsoft Excel. Firstly, highlight the area that you want to chart. First shortcut, Alt F1, gives you an instant chart in the same sheet. Secondly, highlight the area you want, F11 on its own, a new chart in a new sheet. Once you've got this chart, you can change the design and the format and even the chart type using the standard toolbar buttons in Excel. Sometimes the formula bar just won't fit the text you need in it. And so Control C for you will expand the formula bar so you can read everything that's in there, whether it be a long formula or a long piece of text. And Control Shift U again will close it. Also, if you want more space on your screen, Control F1 will collapse the ribbon and allow you to see perhaps totals at the bottom. Control F1 again. We'll put it back. Auto filter is a brilliant command. Click anywhere on the sheet, Control Shift L, filters appear. Normally you can click on these and do whatever you like, but if you click in the header, Alt and the down arrow will bring that up manually and you can scroll around and do untick or tick any you like. Now, let's say we've unticked them all apart from regular air, and on here we picked a particular customer name. But say we now just want to go to another customer. Well, if we go on there again, Alt down, and then just hit the letter C, we clear that particular columns filter. And if we want to click them all, we can always do Control Shift L to get rid of all filters or put them back on again straight afterwards. 
You can toggle between any open application in Windows by doing Alt-Tab, and that will show all the different things that are open at the moment. But did you know you can also toggle just between Excel sheets, which is Control-Tab, and that will toggle between any open workbooks that you've got open, Control-Tab. You can go from sheet to sheet in Excel by clicking control page down to move to the sheet one to the right or control page up to move one to the left. To navigate around an Excel sheet without a mouse, use the arrow keys with either control or shift depending on what you want to do. So control up moves to the top of your selection Control right to the end of it, control down, control left, control up again. But if you hold down shift, you highlight as you go. Control to the right, highlights to the right. Control down, highlights everything down. Control left, highlights back up there. And then control up in this case would do that. Now, if you are outside of data areas, and you do this, control right will take it all the way to the end of the spreadsheet and control left will take you to the nearest data. And that works in all directions. Control down, control up, again, control up. Also, if you hit control home, you'll go to the top left of the spreadsheet and control end will go to the last populated cell on the spreadsheet. But will also, if a cell has previously been populated, it will also highlight that. Again, Control Shift Home will highlight to there. And then you can then go Control Shift Left, Control Shift Down to highlight that area. Once you've done Control Home, you can also do Control End to get everything highlighted. To select an entire row on Excel, simply hold Shift and Space, and there you go. To do it for a column, it is Control and Space. You can insert and delete rows and columns using shortcut keys. Click on any row and Control Shift equals will bring up an option to insert an entire row, entire column, or any combination. So if we say an entire row, there we go. But also if we use shift space to highlight the row in advance, then control shift equals will simply just insert that row immediately. If we want to insert a column then, control space will highlight the whole column and control shift equals will then do that. Now whilst the column is highlighted, control minus will remove it. If it wasn't highlighted, Control minus will again bring up the option as to what it is exactly we want to delete. I'm going to cancel that with Escape. Same with the row. If we highlight the row, Shift Space, or in fact, even if we highlight two rows, Shift Space, Control minus, both get deleted. We can also hide rows and columns using shortcut keys and also unhide them again. So click on any row and Control 9 will hide that row. Control Shift 9 will unhide it. Now, if we didn't know where it was hidden, so for example, Control 9, that is hidden, you can see on the left hand side there, there's a number missing, so that's one giveaway, but also there's a slight gap in the side. But highlighting that area surrounding that and hitting Control Shift 9 will unhide anything that's hidden in that range. For a column, it is Control 0 to hide the column. And then to unhide the column, it is Control Shift 0. Now, quite often in Windows 10 especially, Control Shift 0 is used to do with keyboard settings. So there's a link in the description about how you can switch that off because sometimes Control Shift 0 does not work as it should do because Windows has effectively uh, commandeered that shortcut key combination for unhiding columns. 
So I've got this data and I think there's something wrong with this rank formula. If I hit on any cell and hit F2, I straight away go into edit mode of that cell. So I need to escape to come out of that or enter if I'm changing it. I can go back up to here, F2, back in the formula. I can now click on any cell and click on F4, which will toggle through, making absolute columns, absolute rows, relative column, absolute row, absolute column, relative row, or everything relative. So on this particular occasion, that one, we need a absolute column. And then instead of clicking just one at a time on these, if I do that, they will go one at a time. But if I highlight both of those, as I know I need to fix them both, F4 fixes it all, hit that, and double click on the corner of the cell, to fill down, formula is corrected. I don't like the format of the sales numbers on this sheet. Highlight that, control one brings up the format sales box. Whatever's highlighted at this time, so which is the dotted line around number, you can see there. Arrow keys move between the various tabs. Tab moves between the various boxes. So we can say we want a number. Move on. Number of decimal places. Zero. Use the comma separator. You can see the letter U is underlined. Hit the letter U. You can see the OK button is highlighted, so we can just hit enter on that. Oh, I wanted something else done. Control one. I want some kind of ridiculous uh, font color. So I'm going to go right. Tab, 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 tab. Font down. Whatever font color I want. How about bright green, Select, selected, tab again, OK, off we go. If you want to go straight to a particular type of cell format, there's some great shortcut keys. So first off, general number format is control and the squiggly line, right? Number format, control shift one, straight off. Percent, control shift five percent. Currency, control shift four, and that will put up whatever your default currency is for your version of Excel. And this one I love, it is the date, which is control and hashtag. And there you go. Data and formula entry shortcuts can save you a whole host of time. So first up, Fill down. If I put this formula in here for the profit percentage, highlight the area I want that formula, control D, fill down. Excellent. Right, even better perhaps, flash fill. So say I want the first name in this column, all I need to do is type in the first name there, Alicia, and then control E, and it will recognize whatever pattern it thinks it's recognized fill all the way down the column. Isn't that great? Bulk entry then. So I want to put a formula in here, but first I know it's all going to go down through there. So then I type equals, then for the formula link there, and uh, control enter, and in it goes across the entire range. Right, fill across, control R. Profit percentage this direction, profit divided by sales, highlight across there, control R, there you go. A really quick way of putting totals and subtotals onto a table of numbers is the shortcut key, Alt equals. Alt equals, pick up everything above and you can hit enter. But what if we had filtered the data and just had a few on there. That will give you necessarily the wrong answer, but again, if you use the shortcut key on filtered data, it automatically detects you want a subtotal nine, which will only show, 
some what is showing. So there you go. Here's some great take and time shortcuts. First off, today's date. Control semicolon. There you go. Today's time right now. Control shift semicolon. What if you want them both in the same cell? No problem. Control semicolon, put a space, control shift semicolon, off you go. Recognizes it as a date and time. One of my personal favorite shortcut keys is grouping rows or columns. So if I want to group several rows together, Alt, Shift, Alt, and the arrow key will show whether I want to group rows or columns. So I can say rows. Of course, if the row is highlighted with Shift space already, then Alt, that same shortcut key will automatically detect rows. What about columns? Let's get rid of these. So again, same thing. Alt, Shift, that will let you pick columns, but assuming that we cancel with that, Control, Space, and then Alt, Shift, Arrow, automatically groups those columns. There are also two ways in which you can make your own shortcut keys as well. The first is very simple. Firstly, you need to add the command you want the shortcut for to your quick access toolbar. And the way you do that is you click on the customized quick access toolbar up there, go to more commands. And uh, for example, I'm going to pick refresh all, which is if you've got a lot of pivot tables, very useful. Click in there, click OK. Now once it's up there on your quick access toolbar, you can click Alt and that will give me number seven straight away to access that. So that is the first way. Secondly, by clicking, hovering over these icons, you get told what the shortcut keys are anyway. So it just so happens I've added one there. Control Alt F5 would do the job anyway. Right, the next thing is if you're doing something a bit more complicated, you can simply record it as a macro. And when you hit record macro, one of the things it asks you for is the shortcut key. I could type, and by holding down shift, I can make a, put a letter in, so I can have control shift D, for example. Uh, but the problem is, you, does it allow you to pick letters that are already assigned to other shortcuts? So be very careful which letter you pick if you're going to go down this route. I hope you found something new in amongst all those shortcut keys that's gonna save you plenty of time. If you've got your own time-saving tip though, I'd love to hear about it. Just put any of your shortcut keys in the comments below. I'll have a look at them and maybe I'll build them into a new shortcut keys part two video. See you soon.